hi guys thank you for joining me today in today's video we're going to be taking a look at this mn90 rock crawler 112th scale it's permanent four-wheel drive fully proportional speed and steering with brake control which we will see i'm assuming that means that we have a drag brake so basic stuff for the 2.4 gigahertz shows that you can get upgradable parts again these just look like wpl as i've said before there is a million different upgrades you can get from different companies with wheels metal rims all different colors you can buy metal axles and oil filled shocks you can upgrade the electronics if you want to um so again not a bad price i think i paid about 48 pounds which is about sort of 58 dollars something like that let's crack her open and we'll um should be just a plain silver it was a bit you know for this pattern this is not what i ordered so hopefully it's going to be the right color there we go huge really thick instructions as being ready to run and um, you don't really don't really need any instructions just shows you really how to attach all the little accessories and stuff that you get so again sorry about the noise it's going to be a little bit noisy for a second let's get this one out let's get rid of the box okay very similar packaging to the last one i did the um henlon in the uh MN models one, the, the uh, sort of military style, similar packaging, but this one's clear instead of black. So again, let's move this up there. So as you can see, you've got your basic standard Land Rover. Suspension seems quite, not really much suspension there at all. It's good on the back. But very little it seems you know next to nothing on the front it's much firmer on the back not sure why and again the usual transmitter that comes with these mn models for this price range they all seem to come with the same transmitter and then last of all in here is the charger and uh, it does connect through the balance port to charge and we have a little bag of accessories so just out of interest i've got the um last one i did the review on just here and they're both supposed to be 112 scale so as you can see you know lengthwise there's nothing in it um yeah, I mean, this one, front suspension isn't great. I was catching on the steering. The actual screw for the steering is too is too long. It's catching on the top of the... Yeah, the piece that goes across the axle for the suspension arms to connect to. The, the screw in here is too long. It's catching on there, so I need to shorten that. I don't know if this is a similar issue, but... I say size-wise, they seem very good scale. They're sort of pretty level. This one seems like it's a little bit sagging on the back end. If I lift it, then they are pretty much identical. So just to give you a comparison, and like I said, with the controllers, they all seem to come with this same controller. I mean, I'm, I'm not knocking it. It's it's it, it's at, it does what it's meant to do and, and no more. First off, let's uh, get this one open. And we'll find some batteries. It needs four double A's, as we saw in the last one. Okay, so we've got some batteries. We'll just pop these in. All fingers and thumbs today. Don't seem to want to work properly, my fingers today. So there we go, so let's have a look at the battery. 
yeah, exactly the same battery as in the uh, the other Land Rover. 7.4 volts lithium ion. Well, it says this one is 1200 milliamp. So um, yeah, we get this charged, and while that's charging, move on and have a look at what's in the little bag. Okay, cool. So at least on this one, we've got coloured lenses. So not like the last one. I don't have to pinch the wife's nail varnish or or anything. So okay, so we've got the windscreen wipers. So we'll pop these in. So next we do these plates. So we've got small mirrors and there's no reflective side to the mirror there. So I will need to find some of that reflective plastic, cut some small pieces and stick that on there. These on, on the side there, that's it, they have to pop in. And uh, so what I like about this one is you've got this roof rack as well so you can put some stuff in there and tie it down we've actually got one of these cargo nets which you can use on there and tie your stuff down i shouldn't have done that should i so little hooks catch on everything we've got some hinges for the bonnet let's pop that one in there and another one there when you're watching these videos that you you find them interesting if there's anything that you would like me to do differently if, if you would like me to show more detail or less detail if you'd like me to look at particular points on the vehicle you know whether you want me to pull the body off and so we can look at the electronics see how much space there is see what you can kind of upgrade to like i said before all of this even down to the screw holes in here are WPL parts. And the only thing I don't like about these chassis is this piece here. Um, normally you have this gearbox is a problem. Um, when you're going over stuff, it's kind of the only place they hook up. Um, and as you can see, this has got the same chassis where you're attached to the bottom and they can be an issue um it's the same on the wpls if you look you've got one two three screws and you've got this is a genuine wpl and this is the mn model so this is the mn and this is the wpl so if you look at those it's exactly the same gearbox these arms are obviously different but they mount in the same places these axles are a little bit squarer on the housing there but again everything is in the same place so i think you could this body would go on here um what's the actual footprint like there yeah i mean even that looks the same about the same width these are just bigger tires than the mn so if there's anything you would like me to do just drop me a comment uh, as long as it's a positive so that again, we've got a spare there. We've got a spare windscreen wiper. We've got one spare door handle. I thought we'd put two on here. Did it fall off? Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, we've got one spare hinge. We've got a spare fuel cap. And we've got a spare door handle. So what I like about these is the fact that we do have indicators and we have reverse lights you have a usable spare on the back there not as soft as the wpl tires but they're not they're not far off they're they're pretty good tires i think for crawling so we'll um get the battery when it's charged and we'll come back and we'll have a look all right guys we're back for the charged battery so same as the others we just pop it under the bonnet and make sure we connect this the right way around 
Otherwise you'd be trying to push it in all day because it won't fit. So let's lock that bonnet down. Really good idea. Makes it really easy to get to. So let's pop the we'll pop the car on first. And as you can see with the other one, we have a set of driving lights and the headlights flash. But as soon as we turn the transmitter on, those headlights will go off. And when we drive, they will come on. If we indicate, we have indicators left and right. So if we turn it around, we've got the red tail lights. If we go into reverse, we have reverse lights come on. And again, if we indicate, we've got the uh, flashing indicators. All right, guys. We're back. We've pretty much got all the lenses on. Just got this last side repeater to get in. There's not actually any LEDs in these. You can add them. It does have a hole for the LED. And we have one spare. There you go. I know what you guys think of that be good when the interior is done maybe get a driver in there it would be nice if those headlights were on all the time and you know can't have everything i suppose for the price so there you go guys we're gonna take this and give it a little run i'll put some video up at the end so if you like this video and you found it interesting please like share and subscribe most people are watching my videos are not subscribing um, so if you could subscribe it helps me immensely it helps the channel to move forward so i will see you guys in the next one right so we've gone outside for a quick test i've set up some stones to see if this thing can climb over and it seems to have got up the beginning up the beginning okay and took another run up tried to adjust the line a little bit because uh, these do get stuck on the centre chassis part in the gearbox so again just trying to get it up there um, and it's getting hung up again on that front chassis mount and we nearly go over but not quite it needs to a bit more weight go down I think because it is it does tend to tip very easily I've put the dogs inside for this because they seem to want to play in front of the camera I think they knew I was recording so we get them another go much better line this time and it's gone over there without sort of too much trouble really it's uh, not struggled with that at all this time just uh, it's time to get the right line and then uh, make sure you've got it worked out you because from the on. so we're just going to try what is supposed to be a brake on it I'm not sure if it's a drag brake or what this, you, know, you can see there it just rolls down nothing at all on the, in terms of a drag brake <coughs> so I had a couple of goes to see if I could work out what they were on about and then there you go there's your brake if you're going forward and you're actually using the trigger to go forward in you just flick it to reverse just quickly as you're on the sort of incline going down it actually applies like a brake so you, like a handbrake so you can stop on the hill and until you press the control forwards or backwards it will start actually stay there 